Thank you. By the way, we're doing these strange motions with our fingers, not because of Tai Chi, but there's this whole spider's nest right on the end of this microphone, which we think is a good omen because spider's webs, yes. Um, so, hello, um, I'm Joel Gethin Lewis. Hi, I'm Yasmin Budia. Um, the URL of this presentation is joelgethandlewis.com front slash presentations front slash everywhere 2024 or you could use the QR code below and I'll be showing that at the end of the presentation as well. So what is Everywhere? Everywhere is an open source platform that enables communities to come together to build their own regenerative digital networks. And this presentation is made up of five parts starting with motivations or why we're doing this, references and things that inspired us along the way, um, some of the collaborators or people that have helped us on this project, um, some areas of concern or places of potential, and then finally a kind of call for participation or how you in the audience and on the interwebs can be part of this project. So some motivations or why we're doing this. There are three goals for everywhere. Number one, uh, we want to create an example of how communities can create their own digital networks for sensing, resilience, cohesion, and most interestingly for us, joy. Um, we really want to prove the field of regenerative computing. So uh, we want to span local hardware manufacture and assembly, renewable electrical power systems, and software development practices that function beyond the lifespan of individual engineers and groups. And finally, we wanna, we're really interested in the creation of functional and artistic augmented reality content for and by communities. So, Yasmin, introduce yourself. Sure, I'm Yasmin. I'm an artist and creative technologist and researcher. What I mostly focus on is the impact of new technologies on cultural life, and that's where my standpoint is, and particularly how that applies to communities in the global south, and I'm from Algeria, and at the moment I'm also thinking about um, how we can better do AI and machine learning uh, without being extractive and honoring cultural um, traditions. Um, yeah, I think that's it for me. Yeah. So, hi, I'm Joel. Um, the motivation for me was being living in Hackney uh, in the 2011 uh, riots. Um, there was this extraordinary moment when um, basically the kids in the local area and in the lo in, in, all over London were kind of out networking the police because they were using Blackberries and other secure messaging systems to out maneuver the police at a, a faster rate than uh, the police could deal with and um, this wasn't widely reported at the time but in the area of Hackney I was in there was a complete mobile phone blackout uh, that seemingly accidentally happened just at the moment of the riots occurring. Um, um, and so I was interested in thinking about how in the future we could make community networks that wouldn't be turnable, offable in an accidental or whatever method. Um, and also, I'm just really interested in this idea of the kind of myth of innovation that these big tech companies have. And particularly, I just want a solar-powered laptop. Uh, and and that, why aren't there solar-powered laptops? Even just, look, we've got this big panel here, it should be here. Uh, and that goes against the kind of myth of innovation by these big companies and they're just going around in circles. Um, so some references and some things that inspire us. Um, so this was really, this was the first project that I found that really motivated me. Um, these two projects called Subnodes and You Are Here by the frankly fantastic Sarah Grant aka Chutka. Um, so Subnodes was a, is a project that enables you really easily to take a Raspberry Pi uh, computer and then install uh, a, a whole series of different software on that in one convenient package that allows you to set up mesh networking uh, really conveniently. And that was used, um, the Subnodes platform, to implement this fantastic project, um, You Are Here, that was installed in Central Park and other locations, including Thompson Square Park in New York to allow people to just be able to leave their own stories using uh, a mobile phone and then using that mobile phone to access the local mesh network. Did you put it up? Oh yeah. 
Um, Solar Protocol by Tiga Brain is a web platform hosted across um, a network of solar powered servers and set up at different locations around the world. Uh, each server can only offer intermittent connectivity because uh, it's dependent on weather conditions. But when connected as a network, they coordinate to serve a website uh, from which. Is there too much feedback? Um, but philosophically, uh, there are two things I like about this approach. First is the distribution of resources on a needs basis rather than just demand or whoever can afford it or whoever's the most uh, demanding and aggressive. And the second, it challenges you to let go of the notion of getting what you want all the time whenever you want it and working at a more kind of flow that kind of nature dictates. Yeah, so it's currently this website is getting served um, from Trent University, Canada, but as the sun travels around the world, it will automatically pick up different servers. Um, and Tager is just fantastic, done a whole bunch of series of projects in this area, so really recommend taking a look at, at their work. Um, another one that I'm really excited about is PyJuice, um, which is, seems to be kind of intermittently available. I don't know if there's anyone from PyJuice here in the crowd, um, but it's a really beautiful kind of plug-and-play system for power control and panels and batteries to enable you to power your Raspberry Pi in a very convenient way using solar power. So Harvest by Julian Oliver uses wind energy to mine cryptocurrency to fund climate change research. And it's more of a conceptual art piece. But what I really, really, really love about it is if we go down here and feel free to visit the website and learn how it's made. Um, but it's one of those projects that has an end and a really thought through, this is the end of my project, rather than let it continue forever until something happens. Um, I'll just read out the disclaimer. Since making this project, my views on mined cryptocurrencies have changed. Today I find them to be computationally and environmentally wasteful, regardless of input energy form. I have no investment in any cryptocurrency, I have no cryptocurrency wallet, and I'm no longer exhibiting this project, which I think is a really like, brave and audacious thing to do for somebody who's, and I'm sure loads of us have developed all kinds of tech projects that kind of end up destroying us, but maybe we should think about how to end things in a way that keep, maintains our kind of sanity and relationship with uh, people around us. I can't show Julian Oliver's work without showing the project that motivated me to get interested in them in the first place, which is the quite fantastic, if I can get to it, transparency grenade, um, which is indeed a transparent grenade that he made in connection with the jeweler um, that you can pull the pin on and throw into any room and it'll automatically hack the Wi-Fi and then email you back the password, which I think is just stupendously fantastic in so many levels of deep wonder. Um, yes, we could do with a few more of, of those. Um, another project that inspired us was Red Hook Wi-Fi, which was a community um, mesh-based network um, that was made in the Red Hook area of New York State. Um, the thing that was really interesting about the Red Hook Wi-Fi project is when they had a hurricane in that area, um, I'm not quite sure when that was, but basically it ended up being used by all the emergency services because it was the only network that actually stood up compared to the commercial ones, which is another reason that we're so interested in mesh networks is because we think they're resilient and far more resilient than the kind of commercial systems that are out there. Uh, so the next one is a book, and uh, it's a very useful book that looks specifically at um, artistic and design projects that use solar power. And I like it because it encourages artists to take a moment and think of environmentally kinder ways of making. So I think especially uh, with installation pieces, you, they're quite resource heavy and you set them up and then they do a thing and then it just creates a bunch of waste. So um, I would encourage artists to just take a moment and see 
could I use something that has already been made and then what happens to my to the life of my artwork post this particular exhibit That one's by Alex Nathanson, who's done a whole series of really interesting projects around this um, and a whole series of installations across the world. Um, another project that we love is the Global Village Construction Set by the Open Source Ecology Team. This is a quite extraordinary attempt to basically build a how-to manual for the 50 most essential industrial machines in case of total disaster um, and trying to do that in a kind of sustainable fashion as well. So as they said here, we're developing a life-size scalable modular Lego construction set. Um, you can see the percentage completion of their various parts. Yeah, they haven't got very far on their plasma cutter yet, but I, I, hold, I hold hope for, for them. And the open source ecology team in general are, uh, are extraordinary. Uh, Wilderness Wireless uh, by Brett Balog uh, is a workshop, it's a series of workshops that use uh, tran radio transmission as a creative medium. And what I love about this is that this process explores notions of decentralization, free speech, and thoughtfully navigating communications infrastructure. So as Joel said earlier, over-reliance on um, state-developed infrastructure means that uh, if you, your community, require some independence or to communicate with each other, there should be an alternative. Um, this is a, a particular favourite of mine. This is the, the Full Moon Theatre. I don't know if anyone's heard of this project before, um, but this was built by and constructed by Peter Rice, who was one of the founding civil engineers of the Arab, um, of the Arab group. Um, it's an incredible project. What he and others built together was a series of really large-scale uh, reflectors uh, in France uh, that would reflect the light of a full moon um, to such a level that they could light an open-air theatre with it. Um, and so only when the moon is sufficiently full is that the theatrical experience or play can take place. And going back to what Yasmin was saying before, we love this idea of that you can't just have things on demand. You have to wait for first the full moon, and then also on top of that, you have to wait for a kind of cloudless night. And I love that kind of going back to kind of more of these kind of natural rhythms instead of this kind of on-demand world. And it makes it even more special when a, a play can actually occur. Um, oh, I'll pass you. Uh, we probably won't play these very lovely videos um, that really explore notions of time, how we experience it, and uh, how other non-humans uh, experience time. So we'll move straight on, because we have about seven minutes left, I think. Um, so some of the collaborators or people that have helped us with that project. Oh, I just have to go back for one second. It turns out that the three most long-lived institutions in the world can be split into three categories, which are temple builders, brewers, and universities. So I just suggest that you concentrate your abilities and or attempts in those one of those three areas. Um, so some collaborators and people that we've worked with. So in July 2022, um, Yasmin and I brought together over 30 people in person and remotely to do a three-day conference on the Everywhere project around the following themes of community, sustainability, software, hardware, and content. And after the conference, we took all of these themes and created four areas of concern or areas of potential based on the discussions we had. Um, so some areas of concern, possibly places of potential. So in terms of the community section, uh, these were the four areas that we identified. And we've got some handouts at the front here uh, on paper, very wasteful, but if you'd like to take one of those away, we'd love to hear your thoughts or contributions, or you can get in contact with us at the end of the talk. So we're really interested in this idea of ritual. So how can we make new rituals that 
bring local but disparate communities together. I'm really excited by the idea of kind of what would the Maypole look like for the 21st or 22nd century and, and what would healthy digital participation actually look like? What would that mean? And how can we use imaginaries or making new stories to bring kind of possibility into reality? And finally, most importantly, in the area of community, how can we ensure that our work is truly community-centered rather than self-serving? Um, and trying to push this idea of sustainability away from sustaining things as they are and more into regener regenerative computing and making sure that it's of benefit somehow. Um, Resilience, a lot of systems uh, we have uh, are kind of have a, a lifespan, so um, how can we build resilience through temporary systems, but also how do we create temporary systems that aren't wasteful? Um, how do we redefine the idea of endurance that's detached from kind of uh, economics? Um, and sunset clauses, which is something that's really important because exponential growth um, is unworkable for the planet. How do we get comfortable with, as I said before, projects ending? So on the software front, we're really, we, we, we kind of started off this project, this idea of like, let's buy a bunch of new Raspberry Pis and solar panels and batteries and hooray. And one of the big responses we got back from the people that we actually brought together for the conference was, no, don't do that. There are lots of old Android phones in the world already with screens and Wi-Fi and other things built in. How can you use those? Um, and we also centered this idea of community music events. So I grew up in the time of kind of AM, FM radio and the joys of John Peel and these other kind of amazing DJs. And I'm really excited about how we can move forward this kind of really narrow but deep use case of basically enabling community music events to happen through these mesh networks. Um, we've also kind of launched into this kind of study of online tools that allow offline interventions to happen. But again, returning to this idea of imaginaries, how we can get together with a local community and imagine the future and then bring that forward, kind of, you know, lying about the future to make history. Because um, we're based in the UK, a lot of our thinking is UK based and we have to also accept uh, weather. Um, but also thinking about hardware, uh, we don't want to fall into the trap of making a thing because we're excited about it and then handing it over to a community saying you're welcome, but rather how do we co-design and design based on need and want and joy. We're involved with different communities ourselves um, and so the hardware design should follow on from that rather than be thought of first. Yeah, we had a big response in terms of don't do solar in the UK, are you mad? And went kind of pivoting more now towards wind, but also looking at human-powered or po possibly gravity-powered clockwork as a way of kind of making a ritual about raising the weight that would then fall over the day to then power the rave. Um, and, and we're excited about that. And also kind of the regulatory limits. Like, we're very curious to ask the EMF community about this. Like, we haven't been able to find anything to say that what we're trying to do is illegal but we're not quite sure on if, you know, if we build a city-spanning mesh network, uh, do we suddenly have to get regulated in a different way? Sorry? Ofcom won't know either. Yeah, right, exactly. Well, if they don't know, it's fine, right? Um, and uh, in terms of content, like what do we want to add to the content, uh, to the environment? What relations can we can reconfigure to change as the environment changes over time? What projects can communities produce with access and support? And how can we design for joy? And this twin idea of kind of designing for regeneration, regenerative computing, and then also designing for joy feels like two really exciting areas. Not just trying to make things that are sustainable, keeping things on the same level, but actually having computing projects 
projects particularly that actually leave things better than they were before and also how can we toolkit this how can we make this as something that everyone can use in their own areas so uh, finishing up participate or how you can be part of this project come and talk to us we're here at emf uh, please get in touch via joelgethinlewis.com. The presentation is there. This presentation was made using BIG. Um, thank you, EMF. So we're not um, like a, a formal organization at all. We're just individuals interested in this thing. And it's very much in that spirit of openness and this can belong to anyone who is remotely interested in participating. So please do come talk to us and... Uh, We've got cards for if you have thoughts but don't want to say them now and just keep in touch. Um, yeah, it's been really great. Thank you for listening. Live long and prosper.